This is Josiah Plays, west of Loathing. We're here at the Daveyard, and we're about to head back to the lovely little town of Dirtwater. That's a really attractive sounding name for a town. To take this disgusting recipe to this questionable chef. You find a crate of supplies bound for a nearby army fort. Looks like it fell off the wagon. Or the driver fell off the wagon and was too drunk to strap it down. Oh, you know who else doesn't strap things down to wagons? And then pe then people end up getting run over? In any case, it looks like it got knocked open by the fall. You fish through the crate and help yourself to its military contents. It's not like those army cowards have any use for it back east in their coward hidey holes. I got a couple of bullets. I don't want to go to the mercantile right now. They weren't on the wagon, they were on the horses. That makes it even worse. Like, something might reasonably just lay up on top of a wagon and not fall off, but on horses without being tied down? It's just like... Ugh most obvious thing. <laughs> oh, that whole solo adventure I ran for you was one of the best... was one of the best D&Ds ever. The amount of disasters that ensued because of Saito was fantastic. Valuable equipment, yeah, that shit was worth- it sells for like one copper. <sighs> Got that recipe yet? Uh, the one my jerk friend, Dave J, took to his grave? Yeah, I got it. Hey, thanks a million, buddy! Now my slap will be world famous! I gained 10 XP. Here, let me give you a little something for your trouble. It fell in the slap, but it's still good. All in the day's work. I got a sloppy cowboy hat. Three muscles. So, what was that last hat that I just found? That's the- oh, so this is even better than General Gob's hat, but the problem being I would lose the three moxie from the snakeskin hat band. And I don't believe I have any way of removing the snakeskin hat band from the hat. Cowboy hats are rugged and durable, but ruggedness and durability only go so far in the case of catastrophic culinary carelessness. Hey, Splode, my buddy. How you doing? Good to see ya. What's going on, Splode? I want a new hat band. I had another hat band made of snake, but I sold it because I didn't think I thought... Oh, why would I need another hat band? I ain't got nothing else for you to do. You want some of my world famous slop? You can buy some, just like anybody else out in the saloon. Okay then. I wonder if his slop is better now. Let's buy some slop. I got a plate of slop. No, it's the same shitty slop as before. I went to all that trouble to get him a new recipe. Well, maybe time has to pass and then it's better. Who knows? Doing well? Got your little cousin visiting, so a bit hectic watching after her. How old? How is everyone? I'm good, thanks. I'm real good. So I've got my second group set up. My second group for D&D is going to play through the same campaign with the same characters. We're probably going to start in early September. They should be pretty entertaining. I think I've got I think I've got a good group. I I uh 
I recruited hard. So you guys can watch and see how other people handle the same dreadful situations you found yourself in. I'll bet they won't do some of the same stuff you did, though. Like, ain't nobody gonna be sticking a fish in their mouth, probably, or... Or... <laughs> hot dog. Hot dog. I don't know yet, Splode. We'll probably start the first or second week of September. Looks like it'll be on Saturdays. Instead of... Instead of Sundays. Sundays will still be for the other one. But they'll never catch up, because you guys are far enough ahead of them that they'll never actually catch up to you. So you'll always be able to watch their stream if you want to, and enjoy... Well, it'd be basically like watching somebody play a video game that you've already played, right? It'd be like a Let's Play. <laughs> Let's saddle up. I'm just gonna wander a bit. You happen across an abandoned crate, which apparently fell off a wagon or something since the lid has been knocked loose. You know what that means. It's mine! All mine! Doubtful to have cow spirits and bugbears fapping in the corner. Wait! What? Bugbears fapping in the corner? When was that? <laughs> I don't remember that. Mine. All mine. You fish through the crate and help yourself to the contents, which appear to be mining gear. So you were even more right than you knew. Sun was emoting in chat? I don't remember that. I didn't- I don't always pay great attention to all the various chats while I'm running D&D, &D because there's Roll20 chat, stream chat, Discord chat, and I'm trying to talk to people in voice all at the same time. So, I miss stuff that happens in chat when I'm running those games. I got a thermos of spiked coffee, a can of kerosene, and a can of oil. Oh, neat. Increases speed, lets people light on fire, lubricant or lubricant. He did want to go upstairs with the prostitutes, that's true. <gasps> oh, that's right, I have a room. I was like, what is this? I'm not going to insult myself because that'll make me too angry. Eats bed. Howdy, boss! What's shaking? Not forgetting about anything. Okay. House in the desert, Potemkin gang, that's it. Much obliged. I'm not going to sleep. Not yet. Saddle up. Saito is the only person that does crazy shit, yeah. Well, no, Nox has started to do some good crazy shit. Like, trying to bluff the guards that he was a worshipper of Bane, and then trying to bluff Bazan Gahul that he was there to get a job. <laughs> I can definitely get Saito to dig in some spittoons and bedpans in the game if I just put the hint of treasure in there. Saddle up. You did get an extra couple of squares of movement ahead.
Buried your treasure in dragon poo. Go digging. I'm just gonna wander. Your keen eyes detect a secluded cave in the near distance. Exploring it would definitely be a good use of your time. Shaggy Dog Cave. Let's go. Oh, it's way over there, huh? My keen eyes are really keen. Shaggy Dog Cave. Your bit of cactus. Oh, there was a ring in there, too. Makes foraging random encounters much more likely. You found this ring embedded in a plant. You like plants. Oh, I can raise forage in now. Yay. I don't know if they're super keen exactly. You guys know that I actually own an RPG. You know, like a, a tabletop pen and paper RPG like D&D. Called, I don't know, what's it even called? It's called like Lone Wolf Adventures or something. It's a, it's a, it's an RPG. It's it's a pretty new one. It just came out like within the last year. Where you play Kai Lords in in Magnumund. I've never played it or run it or anything. That could be something to check out. <laughs> your partner Shaggy Dog Cave well, that's a funny name ah, seems to me I've heard tell of this place can't rightly recall the details though I uh, guess we'll just have to check it out Might have been the last couple of years. But anyway, it's pretty darn new anyway. No. I like the cave music. Now, see, some fellow was right enamored by an expository plaque. Hey! Think they're important? Won't know unless you read them. Uh. Expository plaque. Is it from before or after Deaver's life and quest ended? Before. Yeah, Deaver himself worked on it. I mean, he didn't, he didn't make it by himself. There was a, you know, a company that made it, but he was part of the team that worked on it. There's a plaque bolted to the cave wall here. Let's read it. A record of the events of the expedition to and into Shaggy Dog Cave, November 1887, as recorded by Jim Plackwright. <laughs> oh no, Jim Plackwright. You know what's good? Water that's really cold. I drink my water in bottles that are that are frozen. I mean the water is frozen inside the bottle. Most of it, and then and then I leave a little space to add some non-frozen water and I let it melt some until there's a huge chunk of ice floating in the bottle with surrounded by water that's like one degree warmer than the ice so it's like it's really awesome
Why is your internet failing terribly, Jen? Oh, I know why. <laughs> Sidus fault. You can't drink water? I know this makes no sense, but it being flavorless basically makes it taste bad to me. That's, um, unfortunate. I'm not that picky about water either. I just drink tap water. I mean, bottled water is fine, but I mean, unless the tap water is bad, some places have gross tap water, but luckily for me, most of the places I've lived have had good tap water. Like the place I live now has good tap water, so I just drink that. I don't even care. All right, let's leave. Another plaque. There's a plaque bolted to the cave wall here. Read it! Having acquired through various and sundry means a story which is interesting in its own right, but better saved for another time. A map purporting to lead to a large cache of jewels and ingots of precious metals hidden by the infamous highwayman and train robber Black Cole Jr. in the years before the cows came home. I, Jim Plackwright, along with three compatriots, those being Nathaniel Wyman, Cyrus Howard, and Douglas Watts, set out to find Shaggy Dog Cave and the aforementioned treasure. I like the thought of treasure. Our equipment and provisions consisted of one cart and a horse to pull it, four additional horses to be ridden, two shovels, a spade, and a mining pit, a large coil of rope, one large basket of eggs, as well as an assortment of other trail provisions and cookware, my own collection of blank plaques and engraving tools, one large and shaggy dog, and a butt for. Do I want to know what a butt for is? Is it a cushion? Is it a pillow? It's for your butt? Another plaque. After traveling for two and a half days to the south and east, we arrived at a small town named Dirtwater, the largest settlement in the vicinity of Shaggy Dog Cave. Leaving the dog to watch the horses, the four of us entered the local saloon and each ordered a beer, except Sai, who was satisfied with water. Another plaque. The barman provided our drinks as requested, and then withdrew a small wooden box from underneath the bar, asking us if we care to witness something real interesting. Considering that we still had quite a few hours left to travel, we politely declined and asked him if he knew the way to Shaggy Dog Cave. He replied that he had never been there personally, but gave us rough directions which correlated nicely with the notes on our map. I really want to witness something real interesting. I hope there's like a hundred of these plaques, because this is awesome. Upon leaving the saloon, we discovered to our dismay that some unknown villain had tampered with our wagon. Unfortunately, the only supplies missing were the butt four and the entire basket of eggs apart from one that Doug had concealed within a pocket for safekeeping. We also discovered that the dog had absconded with one of the horses, forcing Nate and Sai, after drawing of lots, to share. Oh, I've never seen that one before, bouncing on the- oh, it's done, but bouncing on the lantern? Let's read another plaque. After acquiring a barrel of fresh water for the trip, as well as a replacement butt for, we headed out into the open desert. The sun shone down mercilessly upon us, though we took small solace in the fact that it would have been far more intolerable had we made this expedition during the summer months, rather than November. In order to pass the time on the trip and resist becoming dazed from the heat and susceptible to heat mirages, we exchanged stories of our youth, which I will not be retelling here for reasons of length. All right, this is pretty fascinating. However, <laughs> I 
I will relate to you three odd occurrences that happened to us during our trek through the desert. The first was two or three hours out of dirt water, when Nate noticed a glint of sunlight upon a metallic object partially buried in the sand. This was revealed to be a brass oil lamp of foreign design and manufacture, which fortuitously still contained a quantity of oil. Deciding this might come in handy, we stashed it in the wagon with our other tools. Moving on. Another plaque. Shall I read it? Our next encounter was with a nomadic goblin tribesman, who we discovered spoke excellent English. It inquired as to our destination, and we replied that we were looking for Shaggy Dog Cave, though we did not disclose the reason for our journey. The goblin confirmed that we were heading on the correct course, and mentioned that he had only a short time earlier witnessed a large and shaggy dog riding a horse in the same direction. We all agreed that this was an unusual sight indeed, and continued on our way. I, I hope there's like a million more of these. Some time later, we encountered a large adobe hut occupied by two identical-seeming old men with wild hair and long white beards. They invited us to take shelter from the heat, which we gratefully accepted, and introduced themselves as hermits. This struck me as peculiar, given that there were two of them, but I felt it would be rude to question them on that point. This is the best cave. One of the hermits confirmed that we were near Shaggy Dog Cave, and the other hermit confirmed that what his brother said was true. They also commented that they had seen a large and shaggy dog riding a horse in that direction. We all agreed that this was an unusual sight indeed. The hermits refreshed our water supply in exchange for our butt for, and we continued on our way, excited to finally be nearing our goal. Another plaque. Are you ready for it? After two more hours, we finally arrived at Shaggy Dog Cave. Carefully keeping our excitement in check lest we become incautious, we unloaded our equipment and supplies from the wagon and took a brief respite in the cool shade of the cave entrance. To celebrate our arrival, Doug unpocketed and shared the egg he had saved from our basket that had been stolen in dirt water. Once we were rested, we decided the time had come to explore the cave. Oh, it's getting real now. Doc says it would be awesome if at the end of the cave there was some trigger that changed the plaques to their exodus from the cave. Yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> Another plaque. Discovering that we had neglected to pack torches, lanterns, or any other light source with which to illuminate the cave, we declared that it was indeed fortuitous that Nate had discovered that antique oil lamp during our travels. He gave the brass a quick shine and then lit the wick, and we were relieved to discover that it lit easily and provided a very adequate amount of light. Another flag. Mm. Ugh. Yawn attack. As we headed into the cave, we were further encouraged by the fact that the floor was quite even and easy to traverse, and there were no side passages which might cause us to become lost. Despite this, I resolved to hang a number of plaques to mark our progress through the cave and engrave them with the tale of our journey such that others who discovered the cave after us might be entertained and edified by our story. I am so entertained and edified. Edified as fuck. Hashtag edified as fuck. Another plaque. Soon we came to the end of the tunnel. While Nate, Sai, and Doug took turns with the excavation, I completed the last of the aforementioned plaques. It was a matter of perhaps an hour before Sai's shovel struck a wooden surface with a hollow noise, and we hauled a traditionally styled treasure chest out of the hole with great excitement. Another plaque. It 
it's a hole, a completely empty one. The chest was locked with an ancient and rusting iron padlock, which broke easily from a single swing of our pickaxe. We opened the lid slowly, and the flickering light of the antique oil lamp shone brilliantly upon jewels of every color and shining ingots of precious metals, just as promised by the legends of Black Cole Jr. Joyous at our triumph, we loaded the chest into our wagon and began the journey home. Thank you for reading, and may your own endeavors be equally successful. Signed, Jim Plackwright. That's seriously it? <laughs> That's the end? And there's no... It's a completely empty hole. Oh, no. That's... That's... That's actually pretty funny. There's, like, nothing in here other than... Well, the plaques haven't changed. The plaques have not changed. <gasps> Just now, this many hours into the game, I've discovered that you can jump. You can jump. What? Jump into the hole? Alright, I'll try it. That's not doing it. Yeah, that doesn't work, unfortunately. Be something purely flavorful like the silly walks. Yeah. The aristocrats! Uh, what? Hee <laughs> hee! Okay. Shaggy Dog Cave. Needs more jumping perks. Find a pair of saddlebags slung over a tree branch. Stenciled letters on the side read, Property of Fort All Dead Library. Let's dig through those bags. Dig through the bags! Oh, yay, a cow punching skill book. The bag is full of books, mostly boring military field manuals. You do find one of specific interest to you, though. Let's continue on. Getting some good stuff now. There's an essay about a, how to do a particular kind of sit-ups that makes your abs really thick. 
gives Brawny a perk which increases your maximum HP. That was a chapter written by a guy who survived 17 different near-fatal gorings. He really learned a lot about getting gored. Gives gore, a skill that lets you attack an entire row of enemies. There's a chapter about adapting the stampeding behaviors of demonic cattle for human use. Gives Bull Stomp, a combat skill that does a small amount of damage to all of your enemies. Oh. Stampeding. Yeah, I gotta go with Bull Stomp. If you read up on stomping, it get much better at it. Unfortunately, you accidentally stomp the book into dust while practicing. Bull Stomp. Sometimes you just hate the ground. It really only does three damage to every foe. That's kind of terrible. That's like calf stomp. Yeah. That's not even as good as Tyranny Step. Where did Saito go? Did he say anything? He hasn't been around for a while. Was somebody needed to ruin some shit somewhere? Did he get did they put a signal up in the sky, the Saito signal? Oh, you're here. Hey Saito. <laughs> Retroactively, my failed shop class projects were Saito's fault. You're bothering him about biology in direct math. Okay. Alright, well, that makes sense. Well, you can clutter up the chat if you want, but you don't have to. I'm sure I would have no idea about anything you're talking about. Wander some more. A few hundred yards up the trail, you see a solitary skeleton trudging towards the northwest. It doesn't seem to have noticed you, or anything else, really. Attack it! Yeehaw! It's a mindless skeleton. 21 health. I can just destroy it without even doing anything special. Let's use the old 1, 2, 3. Victory! 10 XP. You won! Hey, skeleton. Sucks to be you. Got a skeleton bone and a gold tooth. Nice job. Your heart skips a beat as you fly, spy a floating cow skull in the middle distance. It doesn't seem to have noticed you yet. Let's approach it. Let's approach it! It's a floating cow skull. But it's not really a cow skull. It's a cow abomination. It's a work demon! Let's use Bull Stomp just for fun. Even though it's super crappy. Fucking <laughs> aces Pete right out the gate. I'm just gonna keep bull stomping it. doesn't even do more damage when I increase my muscle. That's sad. Brush that cow skull to powder, but not before you extracted the useful bits of it. Cow fangs and an infernal... Soul Fragment. For centuries we ate them. 
these teeth are proof that they've decided it's their turn. It's the Cowpocalypse. Infernal Soul Fragment. A wispy, tattered little bit of Infernal Cow Spirit just hanging out on this side of the pail going... Mm. Mm. Yawn attack. Boo. Boo. It's an insubstantial piece of an Infernal Cow. Destroy it or leave it for now? Let's leave it for now. A lot of places we haven't been. Let's wander some more. We discover what is either an open grave or a very deep and rectangular pothole. Jump in and see what we find! Discover... Well, if it's a pothole, it must have been a very long time because you found the remains of an antique traffic accident. Bones, some old coins, and an old wedding ring. Oh, that's what I could turn into silver bullets. Back on the trail. Hey, that reminds me. I'm going back to Fort Cowardice. As you're riding along, you see some braided fuses sticking out a nearby rock. Investigating it more closely, you see that somebody drilled a hole in the rock and inserted a bunch of dynamite, but apparently lost interest and wandered away without setting it off. Or maybe they were just out of matches. Let's take the dynamite. Their lack of follow-through is your gain. Three sticks of dynamite. Continue on. the lock. Bullets and whiskey. Okay. Still can't crack the safe. Snap to attention. Salute the bottle of whiskey, then drink it. Now, get out there and die for your country. Good luck, son with your game three in the bloody league tourney try not to lose that's my advice to you don't lose now there's a conversation at the saloon oh cool you think you're gonna lose badly with that kind of attitude you are Maybe if I level up Bull Stomp a bit, it'll get good. Let's go to Butterfield Ranch. Hey, Bloodluster, how you doing? Thanks for the host, and thanks for stopping by. I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing? Around a corner in a box canyon, and find yourself face-to-face -face with a pyro bow from your boxed in. 
attack it. Yeehaw! An extra hot pyro boat. Menacing move! Reassure me. Doing okay? That's good to hear. What have you been streaming lately? One less pyro bow terrorizing the countryside. 15 XP roasted cow tongue and some cow fangs. Only thousands left to go. Oh, there's an angry looking cow. Or is it a cow? A lot of people don't like the idea of eating something that can taste you back. Believe me, nothing about this particular cow tongue is going to change their minds. It's a lot of mys mysticality. Did not drink the cow's blood. How much stuff I have. I have a crazy amount of stuff. You lost your Fallout 2 save? Had to start over? Oh, that sucks. How far in were you? Work Demon Tongue. Let's harvest the tuna cactus. Harvest a can of tuna hidden inside the cactus. This is a can of tuna scavenged from a cactus. It's a real curiosity of biology. Wow, that's nice. Plus five to all stats for the day. You know what? There was another tuna cactus somewhere. Where was it? Where was it? Was it outside the mission? Pete spots something on the ground and picks it up. He spits on it and gives it a polish on his sleeve. Well, looky that! Find something? A lump of acelite! What you call jerk's gold? Is that like fool's gold? Similar, except it's poisonous. He throws the rock away and washes his hands with his canteen. Pete has grown stronger. Oh, that's awesome. I got an upgraded crazy Pete. Let's continue on. Yes, here's that other cactus. Got it, and I got 10 XP's for it. Giving me a total of 69 XP's. Let's level up Bull Stomp. So Bull Stomp will do 6 to every foe now. Next level it will do 9 to every foe. That starts to make it a lot more useful. Okay, back to A nearby hissing sound alerts you to the presence of a snake, or at least something that sounds like a snake, which turns out to be a goblin cooking flapjacks on a flat and baking hot rock. The grayish batter sizzles as the goblin pours out some more, and then they look up and give you a surprised look. talk to it since I have goblin tongue. Be calm. I will not jack your flaps. Dot dot dot. Uh, did I say that wrong? I will not flap your jock jams. Too flapping? Uh, please, what you to wanting? Well, I demand some flapjacks. 
flapjacks to giving to him at me are demanding. What? You're not to jam flapping? We're seeing just now. The agreement are to altering. Uh, just pull the Darth Vader. Oh, he's re they're really going for the whole Darth Vader reference there. The agreement are to alter it. To praying at you that I not to altering it for- Ah! Just to taking and going away! Got some Gulch Goblin Flapjacks and 10 XP. Alright. <laughs> These are Goblin Flapjacks, cooked on a rock in the blaring sun. As a result, they're pretty gritty. Thank you so much for hosting me, Bloodluster. Really appreciate it. Increases your muscle by five, but decreases your moxie by five for the rest of the day. Okay. Well, let's see. This don't seem a good time to chat, boss. What was that cow standing right there? Uh, yeah. Let's talk to the cow and see what happens. This is a... Daunting encounter. Oh, I just have to straight up fight it. I'm gonna have to deal with this cow if you want to explore this area. This is not a real cow. This is a work demon disguised as a cow. I think we've established that. Okay. A hell calf. 88 health. This thing's no joke. But I'm gonna kick its ass. I'm gonna beef up. I'm on a terrifying move. Menacing move. Let's dance. I want to pipe this rattlesnake. Oh, see, he can't touch me. I got. 29 muscle. He's only got 11 now. Get owned, Hellcalf. Get owned. You're at Vault City. That's not too far. Success. If we're a real Tau, it would try to communicate back. Yeah, exactly, Nox. Banish that demonic cow from this realm. Get thee hands, little doggy. 15 XP, I got a roasted cow tongue. Skin the cow with your trusty knife. Extra thick leather. Work demon leather. Counterfeit. I see what you did there. Oh yeah, I got a needle. There's a rope tied to the fence post here. Grab it. I got a length of rope. If you need to tie something to something else and you don't think string or twine or cord or jute is up to the task, you'll need some of this. There's something buried in the smoldering embers. Ow, ow, ow! Got a red hot poker. Why? Well, I reckon I hardly know her. Really? <laughs> hot damage instead of physical, but it's much less good than my Saint Beefus's thigh. You notice some words carved into the side of the outhouse. Curly was here. Wait a second. You recognize that name. Curly. Curly Butterfield. The legend of Curly's meat. Looks like maybe this outhouse... Outhouse? Looks like maybe this outhouse is worth investigating. Let's investigate it. Yeehaw! Luckily, you don't have to actually go inside the outhouse because once you open the door you find a map scratched onto the inside of it. It appears to lead to Coal Ridge Mine just west of where you are right now. There's an inset map of the mine itself with a big X scrawled between three strange triangular icons. Hmm, curious. 
You open the door and look at the map again. It still leads to Coal Ridge Mine, and it still shows a big X in the middle of three weird triangular shapes. You have nothing to churn. Oh, I might be able to churn some butter later. Oh, this looks bad. Your horror, you see that every single cow in the Butterfear dairy herd is now an unguleth, an infernal cow spirit bound in stone. They are not dangerous unless you get near them. They look like they'll kick my ass. I mean, there's kind of a lot of them. I need to increase my... I need to increase my, um... Pain tolerance. I need to get my grit up some more. So that I can get more angry before I pass out. Should I try to fight him? Should I? Because I don't really think I should. Oh, I have to have lock picking two. Lock picking two is expensive. It's 400 XP to get up to lock picking two. I don't think I'm ready to fight those things. I don't want to get another stack of angry because then I'll be in a bad way. Oh, Arvin Eleron hosting me? What? Thank you, Arv. Are you here? Oh, I really appreciate that, Arv. How you doing, Arv? Were you just streaming something? What were you streaming? Let's go after the Potemkin gang. Feeling that. Hey, Arv. Thanks for the host. What's going on? You spot a hell calf grazing off the side of the trail, just as it spots you. Its eyes glow, and two shadow cows split off from it, forming a small, frightening herd. Not tonight, just stop by. Well, that's cool. Alright, let's ride into their midst. Yeehaw! Yeah, this is a really weird game. We've got a shadow calf. These things have a lot of health. I'm a little bit concerned about this fight. And a runty hellcap. Alright, we need to start right off. Start off tough. Menacing move! I need you to buff me, Pete. Oh, see, I've weakened them enough that they kind of suck now. Alright, never mind. I got this fight all day. Should I bull stomp? It's only going to do a tiny bit of damage. With all three of them. It seems kind of pointless. They're kind of helpless now that they've been so debuffed. I'll one-two punch this one. Yes, exactly, Arvin. The graphic design is really where they put all of their budget for this. You can tell. They went all in for the eye candy. Had to get the latest NVIDIA drivers for this one. Let's touch the mustard, this goblin! They can't even hit heat. I mean, that's just sad. Beef up! I should be able to take this guy out. I love Crazy Pete's twitchy eyes. They're amazing. You need to pick up some beta drivers to handle those sweet, sweet 16 colors. It's not even 16. <laughs> like, 16 is like three times as many colors as this has. Let's your mama hard mama this hard swuggler. All right, let's do this. Also, TGA graphics. Well, you know, this game is brand new, Arvin. It just came out, like, a few days ago. 
It's just uh, not exactly super graftastic. You managed to defeat the calf and all of its shadows, and in doing so, has slightly reduced the amount of evil in the world. 20 XPs. I got putrid cow bile, an infernal soul fragment, 48 meat. Meat is the currency in this game. Skin the cows with your trusty knife. You got three extra thick leather. Just another day at the office. It's a, it's more of a comedy game than it's it's all about humor. You know, there's a lot of digging through spittoons and and bed pans to get items and everything's kind of a kind of a big joke. There's a little vial of rancid cow bile that you kept for some reason. Plus eleven max moxie and one. That's really strong. Okay. There's also a colorblind mode, yeah, which is hilarious considering it's basically all black and white. Well, except for the red bars in combat. <laughs> What's happening, Pete? There's a mine in these parts I worked at for a bit. I'm only telling you so you can steer clear, though. Something wrong with it? It just ain't no good. The Lost Dutch Oven Mine. What do you think we should do next? Well now, if you're in a hurry to push west, I'd say a train will get us there a mite faster than horseback. You got a railroad camp marked on that map of yours, right? Oh, oh yeah. Alright, well that's the main quest. We're not going to do that right now. Look at my crazy horse. Ow. So, this is like a bar, real jail, non-fake horse sales. Genuine TNT and sandwiches. Town hall for an actual town. This is all like fake. Ooh, an outhouse. I might be able to dig in the outhouse and get some disgusting shit. You duck into the outhouse to plan your next move. While you're pondering, you notice something weird. This outhouse has a back door. Let's leave through the back door. Oh, the back side of the hideout. Cool. Oh, here's some rigged up TNT. Oh, I see. These were all the storefronts. They are literally just like a like a like a set. Hefty load. Yipes! What is this? This is the back of the jail. Turns out it's just flat ply load, like a theatrical set. Hmm. The ropes that are holding this thing up don't look very strong. You could knock it over pretty easy, but you should probably hold off until just the right moment. This doesn't seem safe at all. Alright, so let me... The bandit looks distraught. What's the matter, buddy? I lost my belt buckle! near the bar. Ah, good idea. I'll look there. Let's let him go. A guy shouts, Don't go in there! That house is haunted! And runs over to stop you. No entry. So they don't want me to know this isn't a real town, but how would I... That place is condemned! Okay. Non-fake horse sales. The hostler's on vacation and what? No hostler, no horseshoes, no service. Best move along. Eek. Who the hell is this? Oh, I see. I'm trying to maneuver them to places where I can then... Did you look in the, the jail? If I move them into places where... Visiting hours are over! Then I can wreck them all with... Oh, but now that guy comes... No, wait. Come back over here. Oh, 
I can't get the two of them at the same time. Alright, that's fine. Let's get this one by the TNT. And get this one by the jail. Now I should be able to destroy them all by causing fake scenery to fall on top of them. Maybe I can't. Maybe I didn't maneuver them correctly. Hold off until just the right moment. Alright, so this is the jail. So we want the jail, and then the first, second building after the jail. No, but that's what, that's what these are. Or am I supposed to somehow try to get all of them? There we go. No, he didn't. When the hell is just the right moment? I don't... You think it's possible to get all three of them there? The time in Mexico you're walking along not paying attention, you kicked a small cactus? That sounds pleasant. That guy there first. Alright, I think I can do it now. I think I just need to not get too close to the doors while I'm scaring this one. There they are. Now they're all lined up in front of the jail. Cut the ropes! Crash! The fake building falls over on the real bandits. Cactus kicking with sandals sounds like a bad idea. If I were you, I wouldn't have done that. So I guess that's it, huh? I took care of the gang. Gang is knocked out. You can arrest him now if you want. Take him to jail! Actually, that's not yet. Because it's time for me to end this episode, in fact. Next time, we will take the Potemkin gang to jail. But, that's gonna do it for this time. So, if you're watching this stream, don't go anywhere, because I'm now going to switch games to Fallout New Vegas watch it on YouTube this episode is now over so thank you for watching this has been Josiah plays west of loathing